So it is like saying five years back was a mobile phone need to have or nice to have. It's first started as an item of luxury. Not everybody owned it and you know, then people said, okay, maybe I need a feature phone. Why would I need a smartphone? Today, smartphone uh, phones have become ubiquitous. We are talking about an era where smartphones itself will disappear and your wearable will become your phone. So what I'm telling you is that wearable is not just a fitness device or a band. Uh, in the next three to five years, wearables will become your mobile devices. And people will be chucking out their mobile phone and replacing it with one of the fitness bands or a smartwatch. So Goki clearly is the market leader in the space in India now. Our whole model of coaching and service and not wearable itself has proven out to be very successful. I think in India, while Fitbit and other players did come in, uh, they are finding it difficult because clearly people in India expect a lot more from their devices because devices in itself do nothing. I think the other thing we have done is we are scaling massively in India. We just announced a massive round of funding. We are now going deeper into the Indian market. Uh, we are ending, entering the whole corporate world in a big way. But at the same time, we are entering China and the US at the same time. So 2016 is going to be very exciting for us uh, to look at new markets too. Well, uh, clearly it's a challenge. Uh, what Facebook is trying to do is... Uh, is really fool the people here uh, with uh, their free basics plan. It's really not the internet. Why, uh, why it's not the internet. Because internet is a collection of millions and millions of websites and billions of web pages and people are free to browse wherever they want to. Giving people access to Facebook and a few other websites and calling it the internet itself is misleading uh, anybody. It's like giving you one page of the book and saying this is not just the book but this is the entire universe of knowledge. Uh, that's not possible at all. Uh, I think uh, clearly if Facebook is interested in helping the poor, they can set up free Wi-Fi, they can give people 100 MB free internet. There are 100 other ways for them to enable internet in India. I think what their current strategy seems to be more towards acquiring users on the Facebook platform because they are forcing each and every one to create an account with Facebook, uh, which is really not done and which is why I am supporting the Save the Internet campaign and I urge each one of you to go and help stop this from happening. What Facebook is doing is very, very, uh, very, very damaging to the ecosystem. It is not going to affect startups itself, it's going to affect the entire generation of people who will be accessing internet in this fashion. Because you are calling it the internet, then don't call it the internet and don't say internet. Say this is Facebook internet or it is some Facebook's version of... I think one of the most unique things we are seeing is the uh, that a lot of startups are looking at collaboration with each other. You know, in the last few weeks and months, I have got so many requests for meetings for people to understand what to do and what not to do. I think uh, this was a good trend because a lot of times, uh, you know, we were going to our investors for advice, but the real advice lies at startup entrepreneurs who are doing it. So I think uh, finally we are looking at entrepreneurs talking to each other and taking advice on how can they really build business. The example being that quite recently I was I, uh, I spoke to one of the startup CEOs of one of the e-commerce companies figuring out that what should they be doing in terms of pivoting to other categories. And uh, this was one very interesting thing because a lot of times uh, e-commerce is stuck in the electronics category and a few other major categories which is driving that. So people are now looking at what is beyond the categories, what to do and how they can take this forward. I would clearly say that the government has taken a bold step to say that they want to work with startups in India. I think there's a several challenges in India related to the whole laws around technology, what's happening. There are several challenges related to making the business easier and there are... Uh, I mean infrastructure. I mean infrastructure today is a challenge. I mean imagine even at NCPA we are unable to get good internet connectivity. I mean this is supposed to be uh, one of the biggest conference and events place but we don't have internet. So I mean how can we operate and make India the next technology hub when we still can't figure out a way to get uh, high speed internet to most of the modern cities. Forget about tier 2 and tier 3 cities. Uh, I think the second challenge is around the laws. Uh, taxi hailing for example Uber and Ola are here but there is still no laws around every state government as to how to deal with this. Uh, several business models related to marketplaces are having grey areas in terms of business models. The whole telemedicine is very grey on whether doctors can give you advice on apps. So there are several cases where government needs to clarify. Uh, we just saw the government banning online sale of medicine. Uh, and We all know that in the offline world there is a lot of challenge around getting prescription medicines. Now 
can online make it better or will online make it worse so somebody at the government needs to think about this and take a stand and i'm i'm happy to see uh, the government really proactively looking at this